So in this video, let's talk about how to use Mid Journey. Mid Journey has been one of my most used AI tools, perhaps ever. Actually, I'm pretty sure of it. So this is going to be a full tutorial, how to use Mid Journey, comprehensive, a list of prompts you can use, but specifically, we're going to get at the kind of foundational level so that you're able to understand exactly how to do it. I'll show you the best building blocks to create the best images and video possible. Now, when I say I've used Midjourney, I am not kidding around. I've been creating images with it for a long, long time. Here's a few images I've made yesterday. And if you scroll back, not all of them are loading just because of the sheer amount of how many videos I've created. But as you can see here, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, like thousands, maybe in the tens of thousands already going back to January 2023. By the way, these were a state of the art at the time. Recently, Midjourney added the ability to turn those images into videos, and the videos have been absolutely mind blowing, really capturing kind of the essence of the image. So I absolutely love it. They also started partnering with Meta, aka Facebook. So expect to see this art style a lot more. All right, let's dive in. To get started, go to midjourney.com, sign in, and open create. That's this little icon right there. Type in your prompt in here and then hit enter. So here's my prompt. I typed in an origami style combat scene from John Wick, where the origami Keanu Reeves wielding a samurai sword in one hand and a pistol in the other engages in a battle with a group of assassins. Now, don't worry about the rest of it yet. It'll make sense in just a second. We're going to hit enter or click submit, and it's going to get to work creating whatever our mind imagines. And so it's approaching completion and you can kind of see the model sort of like bring the image to life from something that's very blurry to something that is looking pretty good. So you can click on them to see them a little bit better. You can cycle through them by clicking or with the arrow keys. I gotta say all of these are looking pretty good. This is probably my favorite. I mean, come on, that's pretty good, right? That doesn't look like origami. It looks like paper or paper mache, whatever you want to call that. John Wick, phenomenal. Now, if you notice some imperfections here or some things that feel off, don't worry about it because this is just sort of like the first draft. When you generate images, they're going to be numbered one through four. One, two, three, four. Or if you get a grid more like this, it's going to be one, two, three, four. Now, the next step is to do one of two things, either vary or upscale. So as you can see here, it says V subtle, V strong. V is for very, as in, I like this concept you're going with. Give me more like that. Like for example, out of these four, I'm really liking this. Subtle means give me more like that with subtle changes. And V strong means give me more like that with big, strong changes. So I'll click V strong and I'll click V subtle so we can see sort of the difference between the two. Animate creates our video for us. We'll get to that in just a second. So these are the two results that we asked for. One is subtle and one is strong. You can probably tell which one's which, right? So this is the subtle one. Notice it remains very similar to that original one. There are subtle, small changes, but the scene, the composition stays the same. The one on the bottom is the strong one, right? We're changing clothes, position, you know, what he's holding, like there's big changes being made. So if we take a look at the strong one, Man, that's really good. Okay, so that's one, two, three, and four. And for the subtle changes, this is one, two, three, and four. I don't know about you, I'm really liking this one. All right, so what's next? Let's slide it out a little bit like this. And in the right bar, you're gonna see a lot more actions that we can take. So we tried vary, right? So we make images similar to this one with slight changes or strong changes. And you can keep doing that iteration for as long as you want. Just keep varying subtle things, creating new images, and just seeing if you can get that perfect look that you're going for. Or once you're done, you can click upscale. This creates a larger version of the image, much higher resolution. And also I find if there's any weirdness on the original ones, it tends to smooth it out. So we're just throwing kind of a more compute at it, more resources to generate that beautiful image. And again, we can do a subtle or a more creative upscale. I'll hit subtle and then I'll hit creative just so we can see how both of them look like. And now our two upscales are complete. This is the subtle one. 
Let's blow it up a little bit. Look at that. Look at the detail on that. You can kind of tell the texture, the fabric, everything, right? So as we're scrolling down, notice the kind of the field of view, the blurred figures in the background. This is looking good. You can tell like almost all the fingers and stuff like that. Terrific. So that is the subtle one. And this is the creative one. So there's some things that are changing. There's the facial expressions, etc. But for the most part, since they're starting kind of from the same place, they're going to look somewhat similar. Here's kind of like the difference between the two. So the style changed a little bit, how the folds are, some of the saturations. So you can use whichever one you prefer. All right, now let's say we like this one. In the bottom right, you're gonna have animate image. It also, if you're in this view, you can hover and click animate, or if you click on the image, then the entire list of all the commands you can run will be shown here on the right. You can download favorite. We can do a lot of things here. You can see what prompt you use, but in the bottom is going to be animate image. The simplest way to use it is going to be auto. You can do low motion or high motion, right? So low motion might be maybe like slow motion. He's sort of like moving his swords. High motion is probably going to be like a more like fighting scene. So we'll try both low motion and high motion. Similar to when we create the images, it's going to give you four variations. So you're going to be able to select from one of those kind of like what animation you're looking for. Now, I think it's important to quickly point out the pricing, especially when it comes to video, because there are some things that you need to know about. So you can check the website for updated pricing. The big thing to understand here with video, especially is that they have something called relaxed mode. Basically, whenever you type in a prompt, they give you results fast. That's fast mode right away. They also have relaxed mode, which basically sometimes delays the making of the video slash image until their GPUs are a little bit more available. So every month you get a limited amount of fast hours, but on the pro and mega plan, you get unlimited relaxed mode video. The reason I mention that is because if you want unlimited video, you can have it in the pro and mega mode. So for example, if you're doing it for commercial purposes, which are broadly permitted for subscribers, if you're doing more than 1 million annual revenue, you must use pro or mega. But the point here is that you can have unlimited video generation, you just have to run it in the relax mode. So that might take 10 minutes before it starts. I haven't played around with it too much, but it'll just delay the making of the video. But you'll be able to make unlimited videos. So if you're making something that requires a lot of videos, like you're using it for commercial footage, B-roll, making your own movies, whatever, that starts at 60 bucks a month. And you're able to use it for commercial usage, which is kind of cool. I know that's not for everybody, but I kind of thought that was a neat little thing you can do if you're willing to just wait a little bit instead of getting everything right away. All right, so our first four variations are ready. This is the low motion that we're going to be using. So let's take a look. This is the first one. Kind of interesting. Very cool. You can tell there's a battle scene going on. This is number two. There it goes. Not quite as good. Here's number three. Still pretty good. Okay, there's a lot more debris in number three. And here's four. So he's spinning around, fighting the ninjas. There's a one of them on the ground. All right, I like number one maybe the best. Really depends on the, the style that you're using because some of them just look flawless. This one obviously is going to be a little bit harder because if you think about it, there's not that much data on various origami figures reenacting in John Wick movies. So I got to say four... <laughs> For what it is, it's pretty good. And this one with all the flying debris is also kind of graphic. And from here, you can also extend the video with low motion or high motion. So that's how you get more than the allotted sort of number of seconds. So these are 5.2 seconds. And by extending it, you can get it longer and longer. So that's really all you need to know to dive in and get started. The question is, how do you get better? Well, Go to this explore section, and this will show you the community favorite images and videos for the week, the day, or the month. So let's say we want to see the top week videos. They will be listed here. You can go through and see and check it out what everyone's been making. I highly recommend going to the top week, top month, whatever top day images that people have created. And the styles that you really like, like if you really, something jumps out of you, click on it and you will be able to see the actual prompt that they've used to develop it. So here's the prompt that contributed to this image. 
here is the prompt that made this. So you can see how these different images were made by looking at the prompts and seeing what the results were. What makes a big difference? Well, in the prompt, be specific about subject, medium, lighting, mood, shot type, era, etc. The medium is going to be probably the biggest thing, right? Do you want it as a pastel painting? Do you want it to be pixel art? Do you want it to be shot on a realistic looking camera? Do you want it to be macro photography? The best outputs will likely have something that specifies what medium we're using to do them. So this is a vintage style blue and white Twilly de Joey pattern featuring woodland animals. I don't know what it is, but if I type in Twali de Joey, I don't know how to pronounce that, but if I type that in, this is what it is, right? So we're saying we want this medium, this style, but we want it with woodland animals and boom, this is what appears. Here's an airbrush painting of a human eye. So that's exactly the medium that we're getting. Here's a beautiful, gorgeous young woman. Notice the medium they're saying stock photo. So that's kind of what you would expect a stock photo of that subject to look like. They also specify ski suit, ski goggles, outside in winter landscape. Perfect. So here, notice this is posing for a GQ magazine. That kind of nails it. White background, contrast on his face, realistic photography. So as you can see here, as you look at these prompts, you kind of begin to see how they translate into the final image. But these are the things that really help. Again, a subject, like who is the subject? In this case, it's a Caucasian man, 22 years old. Boom. So that's that's the subject. Medium lighting. Notice they, they do have lighting. Contrast on his face. Shot type, right? Realistic photography. Era. So they're saying GQ magazine. That kind of gives you the sort of the era, right? It's not Renaissance. It's a little bit more modern. So that's the prompt. That's probably the biggest thing that you have to play around with to change what appears. Part of understanding what works well is just playing around with it, see what everyone else is creating and just doing more. As you keep doing different stuff, you'll see what works, what doesn't, etc. So that's the prompt. Again, that's the biggest thing, but there's also parameters. Parameters are the little things that go after the prompt. They look a little bit complicated at first, but once you memorize your favorite parameters, it'll be super easy. The one I use probably most of the time is dash dash aspect or the shortcut is dash dash AR. So the aspect ratio is kind of like the, the width and the height of the photography. So in this Keanu Reeves, we used nine to six. So it's kind of like that vertical. This one is 16 to nine. So it's the wide screen sort of like this aspect ratio. This would be a one to one aspect ratio. You get it, right? So this is nine, 16, et cetera. So how do we use it in the prompt section? Let's say we wanted a glamour shot of a female hippo, right? So that's the end of our prompt. Then we do space dash dash AR space. Let me zoom out a little bit so it's not as confusing. So dash dash AR, right? Then space, then you type in the aspect ratio and then the width by height. So 916 is going to be that sort of vertical. 16.9 is going to be horizontal. One to one is going to be square. So whatever you think is best, right? So we're going to do one to one. 16, nine. Nine, 16. The other ones that I see sometimes is like three to four. I mean, you can put anything you want, but there's a few probably like more common ones. And those are the ones that you see here. All right. So this is one to one. It's a square. The wider ones, those are the 16, nine. The up and down ones are nine, 16. And these are the three, four. Look at that beautiful, beautiful hippo. On an unrelated note, did you know that this is what their skulls look like? These are monsters. If we found these like fossils, we would assume these are some like monsters that just eat humans and are just horrible looking. But I think because they're kind of chubby looking, we're like, oh, it's okay. It can't be a monster, but it is. Exhibit A, don't forget. A couple other interesting parameters for like the core layout and style are the following. We're going to switch to a light mode website I'm warning you in advance, but those are raw, chaos, weird, and stylize. Actually, this runs a dark mode fine. So we have stylize. So this is dash dash stylize or just dash dash S as a shortcut. This controls the artistic flair. This is a zero, 100, 500, and a thousand. Again, play around to see kind of like what you like best. Raw mode allows you to gain more control over your images. This is more, if you think about it, there's a kind of like a house style. There's a certain style that slowly evolves over time with mid journey as people vote things up and down. You might want to get away from that. This raw mode allows you to do that. So the standard mode, as you can see here, it's a little bit more artistic, colorful anime. Raw mode is a little bit more 
realistic. It gets away from that mid-journey mode and allows you to do a wider range of artistic styles. We also have our chaos or dash dash C. So as you can see here with dash dash C, as we increase that number, it gets a little bit more chaotic, right? More variety. It gets a little bit weird. Like this is a turtle, but you know, you increase the chaos and this might be a turtle. This one can be set from zero to a hundred. So in our glamorous shot of a female hippo, if we send chaos to 100, we might get something like, so as it's shaping up, you can already tell that it's getting a little bit more weird. Here's one of the results, yikes. And this is another one. So you can see it kind of, yeah, there's a lot more of variety. So expect weird results. Now at this point, you know, most of the things you need to know to really start creating. So take a look at Explore, see what people are using. Click on the various images, see how they're writing them. You can just click this to import it into your prompt and see if you create something similar. Now your results are gonna be different because of a different seed. Each image starts out with a different seed. It's kind of a randomized parameter and you will only get similar images if you start out with a similar seed. Now that's a little bit more complicated. We'll cover it in a different video, but some of the cool things to try is one, check out Personalize. This is where you're able to turn personalization on and then select which images you like. Over time, the AI model will create a sort of a profile for you of things that you like, and it will try to stylize them to your favorite sort of styles, your preferences. So here you can see the difference. So here's a person, but for different people with different style preferences, as you can see here, they're very, very, very different. The latest thing is mood boards. I haven't had a chance to play around with this yet, but this is if you have a specific vision, let's say creating a stylistic cartoon, you want to keep everything sort of in the same style. You're able to curate a collection of images and set the style. Focused mood boards create consistency. Now I do have a comprehensive guide that, that I just created to using mid journey. It goes over everything, pricing plans, how to use Discord, because you're also able to use Mid Journey within their Discord. You can create within Discord. And there's a lot of benefits to that. There's tons of stuff we didn't talk about, like in painting, out painting, panning, and zooming. Basically, in painting is changing some aspect of the existing image. Out painting is if you give sort of one image, the AI model creates everything around it. So if you kind of zoom out, it imagines what it would be like around it. There are also parameters for repeatability and speed, such as the seed that we talked about, whether you're doing it fast, whether you're doing it draft mode, etc. So check out the guide. I'll leave it down below. I will also create a fuller, more comprehensive tutorial that's going to go into all the nooks and crannies and explain how everything works. Comment down below if you want any specific things covered. But with this video, you have everything to get started. So if you haven't used Midjourney yet, but wanted to, again, it's the probably my number one tool. You saw how much images I've created. This is the one thing that I've been using since 2023. And even though tons of other AI tools have come on the market for creating images, this is the one I go back to just because of the incredible styles that it's able to produce. With that said, make sure you're subscribed. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.